Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to get our ducks to swim to a point so that it'll be the groundwork for them getting bred and knowing how to get there. We're going to use the same algorithms we did yesterday. We're just going to add enhanced functionality. To do that, we have to make the lake interactive so it can get mouse clicks. We're going to say lake on pointer down. And the event for it is the plugin we showed you yesterday for mouse events. So we can use object destructuring to get that X and Y event out of there. And this global is object reference, so it'll constantly update every time the mouse event changes. So we don't want to reference global. We just want to create our own objects with their own properties. For now, we'll log out the X and Y so you can see it actually working. So now that our lake is interactive, when we refresh the screen and click, you can see the X and Y in the console down here. That's the X and Y. Let's go ahead and give the ducks this target. Were to give them just the event data global, they would actually follow your mouse around as it moved. And this would never have to fire because they would constantly be trying to get to this. So what we're going to do is give it a copy. So we're going to say the duck tar target is a brand new object with the X and Y. That way it's not a reference to this global. Object destructuring, if you're not familiar, instead of writing this event data global X and then const Y event data global Y, instead of doing that, it's like, dude, we know. It's just like when you import classes in ES6, you can also import variables from existing objects. So we're gonna do the same thing. Now that we have the ability to give all the ducks a target, we need to give them the ability to swim to that target. It was done in the tick, but we wanna do that. We wanna give kind of the ducks their own abilities. So they reserve the right to change that behavior and everything else. Kind of the good things about object-oriented programming is that encapsulation of behavior. To do that, we need to take all our algorithms from yesterday. So let's take our get x and y velocity as a function rather than a bunch of code inside the ticker. The only thing we've changed is that we've made the target and sprite dynamic. So you can pass in, hey, from point A to point B, how far is it? How far is the, the X and Y? Based on my speed, what should my X and Y velocity be to be going on that particular angle? We'll return all four of those variables, X, Y, DX, and DY, which is distance X and distance Y. So anybody knows how fast they should swim in a particular direction and how far they are from a particular target. We're gonna use this distance right here. We already know what this is for. This is for adding to the X and Y. But this is to prevent that shaky behavior you saw a couple days ago with the circle where it gets to a point, but it never actually gets there. So it constantly is vibrating or shaking because it's overshooting the target. It's going so fast. We're gonna create a close enough function. And what this does is says, hey dude, here's my distance and here's how fast I go. If I'm within reasonable distance of it, I've, I've basically reached my destination. So stop trying to get there. Just go ahead and set myself there. Otherwise, I haven't quite reached it yet. Now that we have the ability to figure out how far we are and how fast we should go and determine if we've gone too fast, are we close enough to go ahead and set ourselves there? We can now give our ducks a couple of abilities. The target property is dynamic. We don't have to set that. The duck tick, we're going to treat that and give its own ticker. So the ticker function it has is going to be called and given a delta. We're not going to use the time property now. I'll show you why in the future. We're going to leave it here for now. This tick function is going to be called just like a regular old ticker would be called, where you say app ticker add. You have the delta of time that was called before the last one. And every time this is called, hopefully 60 times per second, we're going to get the ducks to have their ticker called 60 times per second. So they can have the opportunity to do their thinking. Each duck is going to have the ability to go to its target the way it sees fit. First, we have to check if a duck has a target. If he doesn't, he ain't doing nothing. Or in this case, she. She is going to sit there and not actually swim anywhere because there's no bread. Or there, in this case, there's no mouse click with an X and Y property that we're supposed to swim to. So we're going to get the const of the X and Y and the distance X and the distance Y from our good old get x and y velocity function. A ton of trigonometry Jesse Warden doesn't understand, so he extracts away in a prior function. So we gotta pass in our duck, that's our sprite, that's us. Our target is the target that was set outside of us. So if we have one, great. If we don't, no need to even run this function. And how fast is the duck? Let's go ahead and add the duck speed. I'm gonna say speed is two, because they're ducks, they're hungry, they're going a little bit faster than one pixel. Now that we have how fast you should be going, let's real quick check it if we're close enough, because we don't want to swim if you're already there. In the immortal words of the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension, remember, no matter where you go, there you are. If you're close enough, great, go there. But if you're not quite close enough, let's use the existing algorithm to add the X and Y velocity. So the same algorithm we did yesterday. Go ahead and follow to those positions as fast as you can swim. Otherwise, if we're there, dog, go ahead and set yourself to exactly target X and the target Y. 
then delete the target. We're already there. We don't need to have a target. We don't need to run any of this swimming logic because we're already there. All right, so that gives our ducks the ability to actually go there. The last piece is for our ticker to actually give the ability for the ducks to think. So we'll paste in all our ducks, call their tick function for every single duck that's in our array and give them the delta. Let's change our speed. I think I forgot the speed. Duck speed. Yeah, there we go. We gotta figure out how fast it goes. So there we go. Now they'll stop shaking. They use that speed to recognize they're close enough, no need to shake. So now you can move your mouse around, you don't have the object reference problem, and they'll go. And we can change this target at whim. So you can click around and say, Brad, over here, Brad, Brad, Brad. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get a bunch of objects to go to a particular target, not overshoot it by using the close enough function, determine if using the distance formula, are they close enough? And we do math absolute because it could be a negative number or a positive. Go ahead to absolute it always to a positive number. And then say, look, if you're equal or less than the speed, we're probably already there. If you're less than the speed, you're going to overshoot. So just go ahead and set yourself there. Ducks actually have encapsulated functionality to say how they swim if they have a target. Using object destruction, you get a bunch of variables in one line of code and set a bunch of variables without having to set it on four lines of code. It's kind of a way to return multiple values from a function a little bit easier and automatically set four variables. Lastly, we can still use for each, no ops. We don't have to return everything from a function. We're doing a lot of UI development with mutable state, aka ducks that are mutable and we want to love. And that's okay. So using for each, we can say, hey, every duck, we clicked on a new target. And once they've got a new target, they can attempt to swim to it using our ticker function as efficiently as possible in the browser.